हेलो फ्रेंड्स दिस इज डॉक्टर आशीष शर्मा एंड आई वेलकम यू अगेन इन माय यूट्यूब चैनल कॉन्सेप्ट्स कनेक्ट इन दिस वीडियो आई विल टॉक अबाउट बेसिक कैरेक्टराइजेशन ऑफ हाइड्रोजेल्स इफ यू वांट टू नो द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ हाइड्रोजेल्स प्लीज वॉच माय अर्लियर रिकॉर्डेड वीडियो लिंक इज गिवन इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन द करेंट वीडियो विल डिस्क्राइब जनरल कैरेक्टराइजेशन ऑफ हाइड्रोजेल्स so please watch this video till end we start with preliminary conformation of hydrogel formation this is done by vial inversion test friends we know that in a hydrogel the gelators or polymers keep holding the water molecules and do not allow the water to flow out from the geometry of the gel in this test we need to confirm whether polymers can hold water or not in the form of a gel For this aqueous solution of polymers and crosslinker is taken in a glass vial and allowed to form gel in a particular condition then we tilt the glass vial and see the upper level of aqueous solution of polymers and crosslinker we see that polymer chains allow water to flow now we invert the vial and then we see entire solution come at the bottom of the inverted vial it indicates that gel has not formed Now we see the second case where the level solution remains stable in the tilted vial because polymer chains do not allow water to flow even in the inverted vial polymer chains hold water and do not allow it to flow it confirms gel formation now we move to the most important characterization of a hydrogel is rheology rheology is conducted to study hydrogel's flow properties and mechanical properties rheology gives idea of viscoelastic properties or moduli of hydrogel storage modulus which indicates solid like properties and loss modulus which indicates liquid like properties of hydrogels rheology provides important information about a hydrogel such as moduli of hydrogel which should be similar to surrounding tissues gelation time self healing behavior spreadability etc mainly three type of rheology studies are performed on a hydrogel first one strain sweep test or amplitude sweep this test is performed by increasing oscillatory strain at a constant frequency second test is frequency sweep test which determines the relation between frequency and storage and loss moduli of hydrogels at a constant strain third test is time sweep experiment where strain and frequency remains constant time sweep experiment indicates structural changes in a hydrogel over certain period of time more importantly it helps us to determine gelation time of a hydrogel precisely firstly we discuss about strain or amplitude sweep rheology this experiment is carried out on preformed hydrogel This preformed hydrogel is kept on rheometer's plate and a cone of suitable dimensions is used to apply strain. Strain is varied from 0.1 to 100% at a frequency of 1 Hz which is chosen arbitrarily. Let's look at some imaginary rheograms of strain sweep of a hydrogel. On x axis we take strain ranging from 0.1 to 100% while on y axis both of the moduli recorded as the strain sweeps from 0.1 to 100% we started getting values of storage modulus and loss modulus as we started the experiment with fully formed gel storage modulus remains higher than loss modulus which suggest solid like behavior of the gel but after certain value of strain loss modulus crosses the storage modulus this point denotes the gel breaking point and after this gel breaking point loss modulus remains higher than storage modulus which suggest liquid like behavior of the gel another important information we get from this strain sweep experiment is the correlation of crosslinking density with storage modulus Crosslinking density induces solid like properties into the hydrogels which is reflected with increased storage modulus with increased crosslinking density as the storage modulus solid like properties increases gel breaking point also increases 
Additionally, strain sweep rheogram shows range of strain where both of the moduli do not vary with stain. This region is known as linear viscoelastic region. This indicates the stability of the hydrogen in the range of strain. Amplitude sweep may also give some idea about nature of bonding among different components of hydrogels. In general, two types of bonding exist between crosslinkers and polymer chains, covalent crosslinking which is considered as stable crosslinking while another one is non-covalent crosslinking which is considered as dynamic crosslinking. This is a general observation that covalent crosslinking among the hydrogels components result in higher moduli which remains steady over the entire range of strain sweep. On the other hand, non-covalent crosslinking among the hydrogels components result in lower moduli which does not remain steady over the entire range of strain sweep. Hydrogels having covalent bonds are generally considered strong gels and having higher gel breaking points than gels having non-covalent bonds. Next type of rheology study is frequency sweep. It is also conducted on preformed hydrogels. In this study, frequency is varied at a constant strain and both of the moduli are recorded. Generally, Frequency sweep rheograms reveal the following properties of a hydrogels. It indicates reversible and irreversible chemical crosslinking and suggests self-healing properties of hydrogels. It allows us to calculate damping factor which suggests spreadability of hydrogels. Let me tell you about damping factor. Damping factor is known as tan delta which is the ratio of loss modulus and storage modulus. Damping factor at lower frequencies should be higher than 1 for good surface contact but further higher tan delta values indicate gels of low viscosities which can easily flow out from the surfaces. In this rheogram, initially loss modulus is higher than storage modulus which indicates the solution state of hydrogel but in the middle of rheogram a crossover point appears where the value storage modulus become higher and gel starts getting solid like properties. The presence of a crossover free indicates reversible crosslinking and self-healing property of a hydrogel. In the second rheogram, absence of crossover frequency indicates permanent chemical crosslinking. Additionally, magnitude of pleteus of storage and loss moduli in frequency sweep rheograms are proportional to hydro stiffness. Lower frequencies of these rheograms are used to calculate damping factor. Third type of rheology study of hydrogel is time sweep experiment which is mainly performed to find out gelation time. Time sweep experiments are performed at a fixed strain and angular frequency. Time sweep experiment are performed on a solution of gelators, polymers and crosslinkers. This is an initial stage when polymer chains are not crosslinked. Now we talk about time sweep rheogram. At initial stage hydrogel remains in solution form hence it shows higher loss modulus than storage modulus, but as the experiment progresses with time, storage modulus start increasing and eventually becomes higher than loss modulus. At this stage hydrogels show elastic or solid like properties. Here we can see a crossover point in the rheogram where storage modulus crosses the loss modulus, this crossover point is known precise gelation time. Next set of hydrogels characterization is examining surface morphology and internal architecture of a hydrogels. Major instrumental techniques used for this purpose are transmission electron microscopy, scanning electron microscopy and atomic force microscopy. Among all three microscopic techniques, Transmission electron microscopy and scanning electron microscopy reveal both surface morphology and internal architecture of hydrogels while atomic force microscopy usually shows surface morphology only. Regarding sample preparation, diluted hydrogel is put on a 10 grid followed by applying solution of phosphotungstanic acid and then drying and followed by TEM analysis. For preparing sample for SEM, 
hydrogel is dried and then put on a SEM stub followed by gold coating then hydrogel sample moved to SEM analysis. For atomic force microscopy, diluted hydrogel is put on a freshly cleaved mica and hydrogel sample should be dried before AFM analysis. Now, let me tell you general observations of micrographs obtained from microscopy techniques. And SEM micrographs confirm porous structure of hydrogels, indicates internal architectures like fibers, ribbons, etc. Although TEM is preferred for embedded inorganic nanoparticles in polymeric architectures. But when we talk about AFM, generally, it indicates surface moji of hydrogels. If we are developing a hydrogel for in vivo applications, these hydrogels have to be degradable in biological medium. Biodegradability of hydrogels must be evaluated as per ASTM standard which specify standard test method for in vitro degradation testing of highly degradable polymer resins and fabricated forms for surgical implants. As per this ASTM standard, biodegradability of a hydrogel can be evaluated by two methods. First one is by percentage weight reduction method. In this method, a fixed amount of hydrogel is dried and weighed. This dried hydrogel is incubated in specified medium for certain time period. After specified period, the degraded hydrogel is removed from biological medium, dried and weighed. Then percentage weight reduction is calculated by the given miller. The percentage weight reduction is calculated at different time points and plotted as function of time to evaluate the time which is required for 100% degradation or weight reduction of a hydrogel. Biodegradation of a hydrogel can also be confirmed by scanning electron microscopy by analyzing the degradation at microscopic level. Hydrogel is dried and images of this dried hydrogel are recorded by SEM. Then, this hydrogel is immersed in suitable meat incubated for certain time period. After specified period, the degraded hydrogel is removed from biological medium, dried and subjected to SEM analysis. The SEM analysis is done at different time points to study the morphology of degraded hydrogel. For example, I am mentioning the results of biodegradation studies of hydrogels prepared by me and published in Chemistry European Journal. SEM micrographs clearly indicate progressive degradation of hydrogels surface with time. A hydrogel may show shorter biodegradation time or longer biodegradation time. Generally shorter biodegradation may be resulted from less crosslinking, low molecular weight of polymers and may lead to burst release of entrapped drugs and this type of hydrogels remain in the body for shorter time. But longer biodegradation generally resulted from higher crosslinking, high molecular weight of polymers and may lead to extended release of entrapped drugs and this type of hydrogels remain in the body for longer time. Next evaluation of hydrogels is swelling properties of hydrogels. Firstly, I will let you know the significance of swelling of hydrogels. Sometimes it is not desirable but sometimes swelling is required and strategically designed. First case when swelling hydrogel is not desirable especially in case of implants where the swelled hydrogel may compress the adjacent tissues. For example, if a hydrogel is placed on a tissue which is close to a nerve fiber, in this case the swelled hydrogel may compress the nerve fiber, this may lead to sensing the compressed nerve. Apart from this, sometimes swelling is strategically designed, for example pH and temperature sensitive hydrogels. In both of the cases, in response of pH or temperature or both, hydrogels may swell and shrink reversibly. Usually this of hydrogels are designed for drug delivery. To measure the swelling of hydrogel quantitatively a cylindrical hydrogel is immersed in a suitable medium and incubated for certain period of time. After the specified period, this hydrogel is removed from the medium and its mass, diameter and height are measured. 
Then what is calculated by pi r square h, where h is the height of the gel and r is radius of the cylindrical hydrogel. By this method we can find out the volume of the swelled hydrogel. Similarly, we find out the volume of the hydrogel before immersing in the suitable volume. By this, swelling ratio can be determined. Swelling of a hydrogel can be evaluated against the different variables such as cross-linking density, effect of pH and effect of temperature. Generally swelling is inversely proportional to cross-linking density, while if of pH and temperature on swelling of a hydrogel depends upon the chemical structure of the polymeric components of hydrogels. The last characterization of hydrogel, which is being discussed in this video is cell cytotoxicity studies of hydrogels. This type of studies are carried out to ensure cytocompatibility of hydrogels to mammalian cells. Cytocompatibility of hydrogel is generally evaluated by NTT assay as per ISO 10993 Biological Evaluation of Medical Devices, Part 5 Tests for In Vitro Cytotoxicity. In this method, hydrogel is incubated in suitable culture medium at 37 degree centigrade for per time period based on degradation profile for extracting the degraded and leached products. Simultaneously, suitable cells are cultured and maintained in the specific culture medium in suitable conditions to get cells confluency of 10,000 cells per 100 microliter of MEM culture medium per after certain time period, degraded products come into culture medium. Suitable volume of medium containing the degraded products is withdrawn and added into wells and cells are incubated in the specified conditions. Then culture medium removed from wells, MTT solution is added and incubated for 2 hours. Now transfer the plate under microscope to visualize the formazin crystal. These formazin crystals are dissolved in 100 microliter of isopropanol and absorbance is recorded at 570 nanometers in a microplate reader. Cell cytotoxicity of a hydrogel may be evaluated against different variables. First one, crosslinker concentration, less crosslinking and higher crosslinking. Second one, polymers molecular weight, low molecular weight polymers and higher molecular weight polymers and third one degradation time, faster degradation and slower degradation. Millions of thanks for watching this video. If you feel this video is useful, kindly share and like the video. Subscribe Concepts Connect YouTube channel for being updated with the upcoming videos. Thank you so much once again.